Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Dan Lemieux, County Board Chairman, co-host of our monthly TV show with Adam Payne, our Administrative Coordinator. And we try to bring the viewers, uh, the residents of Sheboygan County, the services that we as a, Sheboygan, as a county provide uh, our residents. Uh, this month we have with us Chuck Mayer, our airport manager. Uh, most of the uh, departments that we've been highlighting over the past uh, months and years uh, have been highway department, health and human services, sheriff's department, a lot of the departments that, that our residents are more familiar with, but many of them probably aren't aware that, that Sheboygan County operates the airport. And so Chuck is with us today as our airport manager, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the airport operation out there and his involvement with it. But Chuck, maybe you could just start by uh, telling our viewers a little bit of background about yourself and how long you've been uh, working at the airport. Well, Thank you, Dan, Adam, for inviting me to today's session. Really appreciate it. Um, I've been with uh, uh, Sheboygan County as far as the airport manager uh, for the last 15 years. Prior to that, um, I had uh, been with the uh, county's uh, planning and resource department. And uh, very fortunate 15 years ago to have the opportunity to, to step into that position at the airport and uh, was able to u utilize uh, kind of the diverse background I have in aviation and, and uh, planning skills and whatnot and put that, uh, focused all of that energy towards uh, the airport uh, development and improvements and things like that. You've been so. with the airport 15 years. How long have we had a Sheboygan County Airport? The airport has been operated by Sheboygan County since 1962. That's when it was officially dedicated. And uh, <clears throat> interesting history on, on the airport, uh, going back into the, the 40s and 50s, all the public debate that had taken place as far as uh, the need for uh, a uh, municipal airport. Um, uh, back in the 40s and 50s, there were a number of uh, uh, privately owned airstrips around uh, the county. Uh, there was one south of Sheboygan, another one out in the Plymouth area. and. Uh, Again, a lot of debate between uh, the uh, city, the common council, the county board as to the viability of a, uh, a publicly owned airport. And uh, that issue finally came to a head and, and was put to the public in a referendum vote in November of 1956. And uh, uh, the vote uh, came out uh, you know, very positive as far as the taxpayers wanting an airport. So. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, county board, uh, I believe uh, in early January of 1957, established, uh, I think, what was called a uh, Parks Property Aviation Committee, and funds were allocated, uh, you know, for uh, airport uh, uh, development. Uh, the airport construction began in about 1958. I think it was completed in 1960, and the airport officially dedicated in, in 1962. So there's a it's a snapshot history of, uh, of where the airport uh, originated from. So prior to 62, there was nothing out at the site that we now call no. the Sheboygan County Airport? Uh, at, back, <clears throat> back then, that basically was just uh, farmland, swampland, and, and woods. That, that's all that was there. What is the size of the airport? How large is the airport compared to other airports? And, and, and what is the responsibility of your department in regards to the okay. airport? Um, the county holdings, uh, uh, the present airport property right now is uh, about 654 land acres uh, that, that we own. Uh, we also have an additional 200 acres of navigation easement and air rights that are located above the ground um, off the uh, runway approaches and things like that. So, uh, you know, we're, we're at 900 acres. Uh, uh, later in the program, as we get into discussions on, uh, you know, the airport expansion plans and whatnot, uh, we'll be um, increasing the, our holdings probably by another 200 acres as we get into these runway extensions and road relocations. So it's a, uh, you know, a fairly good uh, holding that, that the, the county has out there. Uh, as far as land ownership uh, and um, the responsibility of, of seeing that property operations, uh, operation wise, uh, run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, is under the responsibility of the uh, county airport department. And it's one of the smallest departments that make up, you know, county government. Uh, there are three of us, you know, in the uh, airport department. Um, 
besides myself as a full-time airport manager. Uh, I have two full-time airport maintenance, maintenance technicians and uh, as uh, uh, workload demands we also take on a limited term employee. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, you know, we do everything from A to Z on, on that facility, uh, the snow removal, um, maintain the uh, visual aids, navigational aids, um, uh, keep basically the, the entire uh, transportation facility in safe, uh, you know, operating condition. You say you're in operation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's correct. You're not out there. Your staff isn't. Your, your small staff that you have isn't, right. isn't out there 24 no, hours a day, seven we're, days a week. We're typically out there, uh, you know, we'll start at 7 in the morning and uh, usually 5 o'clock. We're, we're finished Monday through Friday. Uh, as uh, incidences occur, um, systems, uh, you know, that, that uh, may break down, whatever, uh, then we're called back, you know, for immediate service. So uh, of the three of us, uh, someone always has to be available 24-7. But as far as landing and takeoffs and things like that, you're not involved with that as far as having to be there. That's why you say it's an operation 24 hours a day. That's correct. Okay. Most of the uh, systems on the field uh, are uh, pilot controlled. It's, it's a radio controlled type of system that uh, uh, when a, a pilot uh, <clears throat> wants to take off or land at the airport by uh, using his onboard radio, he can uh, manipulate uh, some of the visual aids that we have on the field, the runway lighting, the uh, approach slope indicators, things like that. So it's as automated as we can make it. Uh, other than your, you and your department, uh, there's also a fixed-based operator, uh, RPN out of the airport. Could you explain that situation and who the fixed-based operator is? Right. A uh, fixed-based operator is, uh, I guess we could uh, refer them to them is uh, almost a service station of uh, the aviation industry. As an example, if you owned an airplane and you needed service uh, performed on that airplane, uh, you'd take it to uh, the fixed space operator. And uh, they provide uh, um, mechanics uh, for the engine overhauls, inspections, airframe inspections, things like that. Um, if you need uh, uh, any other type of uh, aviation type support services, uh, Flight instruction, uh, air charter, just, just the full full gamut of aviation services are provided by the fixed base operator. And again, that is a uh, private sector business that uh, leases uh, property from the county on, on the airport. Uh, you know, they, they've made improvements on, on the property and, and that is how they operate. Most of us, when we think of an airport, if we haven't been out to Chippewa County Airport, we're used to going to Mitchell Field or O'Hare or up to Green mm -hmm. Bay uh, to fly on a commercial flight. Um, what type of flights are coming in and out of out of, out of Chippewa County Airport, and, and how busy is is our airport compared to some of the other airports around the state? Well, I, I think for any any of the public who's uh, had the opportunity to uh, drive through the airport, stop uh, for, you know from time to time, and then just watch the amount of activity that we have. It, it's, it's really impressive and every year uh, the number of flight operations continue to increase. Um, out of over 100 public airports in the state of Wisconsin, Sheboygan County Airport is ranked as the seventh largest as far as based aircraft. We have over 115 aircraft uh, at that facility and uh, we're the 10th busiest as far as uh, yearly aircraft operations. Uh, we experience over 80,000 aircraft operations per year. So it gives you a little perspective just where Sheboygan County Airport is, uh, you know, overall with the other airports in the state. You mentioned a number of planes that were based at Sheboygan County Airport. Right. What type of... Uh, of individuals or corporations are these? Well, who are these tenants uh, that mm -hmm. are based in Sheboygan County Airport? Um, the, the structure of tenants at, at Sheboygan County Airport uh, is something that we're, we are so fortunate. And there, I know there are a lot of smaller airports around the state that wish, we had, wish they had the type of tenant base that we have. We are, uh, our, our backbone basically is the industrial and corporate uh, flight departments uh, that are located at Sheboygan County Airport. 
And uh, you know, with, with the diversified business and industry that we have throughout Sheboygan County, uh, you know, those businesses have chose to uh, establish their own flight departments so that they can move their people when they want and to where they want without having to rely on commercial airline schedules and limited, uh, you know, destinations and things like that. So that is something that we've seen, at least in my experience at the airport the last 15 years, that has progressively increased. Um, uh, the type of aircraft uh, that these businesses use typically are anything from a, a single engine, uh, four place, uh, you know, Cessna or, or Piper type aircraft, all the way up to the uh, twin engine turboprop, uh, the King Air uh, type aircraft to uh, the small to medium class business jets. And uh, just in the last, I would say, seven years, I've seen many of the corporates uh, transition from the twin engine turboprop to the small corporate jet. Are there quite a few individuals also that have uh, planes, that, that they, they have hangar space out there? Right. Um, on the airport, we have basically three different uh, areas of land use. Uh, on the west side of the field, where we have the large industrial corporate hangars, uh, center field terminal areas are fixed space operator, and there's another commercial operator out there that has a T hangar storage. And then on the east side of the field, we have um, 37 private hangars, and that's for basic general aviation, smaller business type. Uh, um, people, you know, coming into aviation. Uh, interesting to note, um, on the east side of the field with our small uh, private hangars, we have maxed out our real estate area presently as far as uh, available lots for future building. And when we discuss, uh, you know, some of the long-range plans of the airport, road relocations and things like that, we found that to be necessary in order to allow us to, you know, be able to continue you know, a are, future building. Are these hangars, hangars that we have put up and we lease to, to individuals or are these owned directly by these individuals and corporations? It was the decision of county board years ago, I think right, right from the get-go when the airport was constructed that uh, the county would retain um, the uh, basic real estate hangar lots, so to speak, and any uh, improvements on the lots would come from the private sector. So the county does not build hangars for private or, or the business sector. And all these hangars are on the property tax rolls? That's the, correct. The airport yeah. itself is owned by the county, so it's not on the tax rolls, but the improvements, mm -hmm. the hangars, that the would all be taxable property, correct? Right. There's about, the last I checked with the Town of Sheboygan Falls uh, assessor, I think we have over $4 million worth of uh, uh, hangers on that, that field that are on the tax roll okay. as far as assessment. So. Dan mentioned earlier we have uh, 23 department heads, and I always enjoy interact interacting with Chuck because he has such a calm, cool demeanor. And our viewers might be thinking, well, after 15 years at the airport with the, all the upkeep, the maintenance, what's been happening out there and if you haven't taken a trip out to the airport you have yeah. got to check it out chuck and his staff have done a tremendous job and one of the things that we wanted to talk about this morning was the ongoing planning that you're involved with and all the capital improvements tell us a little bit about what you what you've got uh, planned for the future <clears throat> okay well the the planning has been long time in the works to to say the least um, when I started 15 years ago, uh, that facility uh, was in, in dire need of, of help. Uh, it, it, you know, the infrastructure you know, was really uh, falling apart, so to speak, and it, it took us many years of just uh, getting in there, um, cleaning things up, um, getting improvements made, changing ordinances, making that whole facility more user-friendly. While that was taking place, we also initiated uh, the uh, uh, airport master plan update uh, and quite a few studies to help support that master plan as far as our uh, capacity and, and demand uh, projections, uh, uh, the environmental assessment uh, studies uh, for future expansions, economic assessment studies, uh, you know, are these 
long-range uh, plans and, and expansions, are they viable? Uh, is it something that um, the FAA will look positively on Sheboygan County and cost share these projects with us? So we, we really had a lot of uh, uh, studies you know, that had to be done and we had to prove not only to the county board, uh, you know, to the uh, Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics and the FAA that, you know, these, these were credible projects. Uh, otherwise, uh, the funding just would not be there, nor would, would the support. And with the planning, and we'll get into some of the specifics, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but with the planning that you're doing, who, who's involved with that? I know that uh, you have a liaison committee, you work with an advisory right. committee. Give our viewers a flavor of who's involved mm -hmm. with that planning process. Um, <clears throat> over, the, over the past 15 years, it was interesting the, as far as li liaison committees that I answered to. Uh, when we initially took over the airport, it was the property committee. Uh, from there, the airport uh, was uh, transferred to the uh, county resources committee. And then most recently, this year, as of April, uh, due to a, a county board consolidation effort in, in committees and meet, meetings and things like that as far as uh, uh, taxpayer savings, um, the airport now answers to a transportation committee. And uh, that transportation committee also oversees the uh, county highway department and the county airport department. It makes sense, you know, total transportation. So what are some of the... Uh projects that you've been working on of late? Okay, uh, the most recent project that we, we've completed was the extension of our um, uh, secondary runway. Uh, we refer to that as runway 1331. Um, that uh, runway had been 4,000 feet in length. Um, we had just completed a 1,000 foot addition to that runway now. And in addition to the runway extension, we had uh, land that had to be acquired, navigation easements, air rights, uh, we had to relocate at Town Road on the west side of the airport, to the Meadowlark Road. Um, and it, it was a decision of the committee um, seven years ago when, when we started this planning process to get uh, as, as um, many people involved as possible as far as, uh, you know, the, uh, besides liaison committee, the, the town board, our neighbors around the airport, and um, you know, as, as the plan evolved, everybody, uh, you know, was pretty much on board and, and supported, you know, the concepts that, that we're initiating now. Now, you mentioned some of the uh, extensions, the road, uh, moving the road over so you can mm -hmm. extend one of the runways. You're working on another runway. What are some of the projects that you're looking at completing in the next five years? On uh, the, uh, the county five-year master plan, which dovetails with the, uh, the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics uh, six-year uh, airport improvement uh, plan, uh, we're looking at um, the relocation of County Trunk Highway O. And uh, matter of fact, uh, what might help the, the viewers, so we, we do have a, a visual aid here, could possibly uh, help uh, the viewers out a little bit. Um, as, as I had just mentioned before, Adam, uh, this summer we had completed uh, the 1,000-foot uh, extension to this uh, uh, runway 1331. This is the runway that, that kind of runs east and west, same direction as County Trunk O runs east and west direction. Uh, that was completed, um, uh, this uh, matter of fact, it was just about a month ago that we officially opened that, that new runway. Uh, we also uh, relocated Meadow Arc Road really gave it a uh, quite a curve out here and, and uh, ultimately you can see as we, we get into our expansions um, the uh, roads surrounding the airport are going to probably resemble the racetrack at Road America. <laughs> Everything is really going kind of serpentine in design but it, again it was a decision that was made seven years ago rather than close town roads and, and make things inconvenience for uh, an inconvenience for the residents of uh, the town of Sheboygan Falls and, and our, our farming neighbors that surround the airport, those roads would remain open. Um, now, so, now projects like this take a great deal of money, and that's where I get back to your demeanor. Yes. Not only do you have a, a, a very nice unconfrontational demeanor, you have to get out there and you really have to pound the pavement to get dollars to fund these projects. 
you've been tremendously successful. Give our mm -hmm. viewers a flavor of what dollars you've brought in mm -hmm. and how you've gone about doing that. Uh, I think the first seven years on board at the airport, just infrastructure improvements, uh, we've been able to uh, uh, capture 7,000, uh, or excuse me, back up a little, that was close to 7 million That's in uh, uh, state and federal funds for these infrastructure improvements. Uh, what we're proposing coming up in the future with the relocation of County Trunk O, the uh, extension of our primary run, runway ultimately somewhere out in 2006, <coughs> 2007. We also have uh, industrial and, and general aviation taxi lanes that need to be uh, expanded. That's probably $11 million, you know, that, that we've got uh, uh, programmed out there. And um, I found that by, you know, having these plans completed and, and having everyone on board with them, as an example, the county board, uh, typically we would run the, uh, the expansion concept plan to the board uh, under resolution form and have them, uh, you know, see if they would adopt that concept, you know, and, and this is just all in that planning process. From there, I can take this packet to the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics and the FAA and say, here, all of our ducks are in a row. Uh, initial, uh, you know, the preliminary plans and designs are, are in, in, uh, in the works. Uh, we have our 20% of, of uh, the uh, uh, airport owner funding in place. So we're looking for 80% matching funds from the Wisconsin Bureau of Aeronautics, which gets their money from the Federal Aviation Trust. And I think your match may be as attractive <clears throat> as any in the county. Again, 20% funded by Sheboygan County, Sheboygan County taxpayers, 80% yes. coming from state and federal dollars, which mm -hmm. in a, to a certain extent we're paying for as well, but Right. So is the rest of the state or the rest of the country, and we're being able to bring that back right. for our airport. Right. Airport, the last question. So we have this airport in place. It's providing a benefit to the community. Just how positive of an economic benefit is it providing? Why are we in the business of operating a public airport? Okay. Um, and, and that question was put to us many times as far as, it, you know, as we introduced these uh, uh, runway uh, extensions and other infrastructure improvements and, and you know the large dollar amounts that are associated with these improvements. Are we justified in, in putting that type of money into the airport? Um, I've had three uh, economic uh, impact uh, studies uh, conducted uh, uh, over the years. I think uh, we did one in 90, 1993, 97 and just uh, recently again year 2000. Um, what the economic impacts uh, have defined is that, uh, boiling it down as simply as possible, the economic benefit to cost ratio is about 24 to 1. And, and this was from a study, you know, just a few years out. And we know that number is getting better. So it, it is a, a definite, uh, a very positive economic uh, influence uh, on Sheboygan County to have a viable airport there that are industrial and, and commercial uh, uh, commercial sector can utilize, you know, in getting out and, and accessing that global marketplace because that, that's what it's all about right now with uh, the uh, industrialists that we have in Sheboygan County. I mean, they're working, you know, beyond the United States. Uh, they have uh, uh, plants in Europe. Uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, Pacific Rim areas and whatnot. And these folks have to be able to move their people you know, in a, in a very uh, uh, timely fashion. So for every dollar that Sheboygan County puts toward maintaining, operating <clears throat> our county airport, $24 are getting pumped into the local economy. Exactly, right. Yeah. That would be the cost to benefit uh, ratio. Very good. Thank you, yeah. Chuck. Thank you. Chuck, a little over a year ago, 9-11 changed uh, many people's lives. It changed how many businesses operate and probably none more than the airline industry and how they operate and how they function and, and their right. viability even. Um, and we hear a lot about uh, airport security and, and things like that. We don't have a lot of time left, but could you just tell us a little bit about how that affected Sheboygan mm -hmm. County Airport? Right. Um, 
uh, as of uh, September 11th last year, uh, uh, airport was hurting, no doubt about it, just like any other airport, uh, the 4,000 airports uh, from coast to coast in the United States. Uh, everyone was shut down. It, it was devastating, to say the least. Um, since that time, uh, I guess one of the positive things that, that has come out of 9-11 is, is the fact that we have seen a, a, a marked increase in um, flexjet type operations where uh, the uh, corporate community now is, is buying blocks of time you know, in, in, for business aircraft travel rather than relying as heavily as, as they had done previously in you know, the commercial airlines. So that, that portion of the aviation industry is, um, you know, really bouncing back quite, uh, quite strong and um, just trying to keep up with the demand. We see that at Sheboygan County Airport every day. Uh, the, uh, the corporate, uh, the jet, the turboprop uh, aircraft operations that, you know, are coming into Sheboygan County besides our own tenants that are based at Sheboygan that, you know, are leaving with, with their aircraft. So it, it's uh, been a, a very positive uh, increase in, in that respect. Security-wise, are, are we doing anything different now than we did a year ago? Um, definitely are. We uh, are working on a, a security system for our perimeter gates in, in the uh, terminal area, uh, going to a security card, a, a fob, key fob type uh, access uh, for our tenants and suppliers, things like that. Uh, we're one of the first uh, general aviation airports in in the state of Wisconsin, actually, to take the lead and and to, you know, uh, initiate that type of security. Uh, the FAA really hasn't come down with any firm regulations yet governing general aviation airports. The air carrier airports, such as Mitchell International, um, Green Bay, Appleton, you know, that have uh, set airlines in, yeah, they're under uh, uh, TSA regulations and whatnot. But uh, general aviation like Sheboygan, um, you know, nothing has is, is really come down uh, on us yet, but we know it's coming. And uh, in an effort to protect the, the integrity of what we have at that airport, the investment that we have out there with the, the business and, and corporate community, you know, we went ahead and on our own to initiate this. The Bureau of Aer Aeronautics looked very keenly on the security program that we bought on that we're bringing on board and uh, uh, has chose to uh, cost share that with us, again, that 80-20. So it's, uh, you know, it's, I think it's going to be a win-win situation. One of the last things we wanted to talk about, uh, and you have uh, all of about 30 seconds to, to talk about this, is we, <laughs> uh, we host a Wings and Wheels event every year. Could you just tell yeah. us when it is and what it is, what's involved in it? Okay, we just finished the 12th annual Wings and Wheels this past Father's Day. Um, hopefully we'll be doing it again next year. Uh, local EAA Chapter 766 uh, is, uh, you know, Providing that that uh, they sponsor that activity for us, it's something that Sheboygan County doesn't sponsor. You know, we just we've got the airport, and and they want to do the activity on on the airport. So um, I wish we had more time to talk about the spinoff from that chapter, the Sheboygan County Aviation Corporation, that is uh, in the process of putting up a uh, probably I think it's going to be about a 1.3 million dollar. Aviation Museum uh, we'll at have, the airport. We'll have to get John. Uh, okay. I have to get John in a few months <laughs> and then talk about wings and wheels again next okay. month. We're going to uh, have Tim Finch, our finance director, as our guest, and we'll be talking about a budget that will hopefully be passing in about two weeks. Thank you.